Hey everybody, happy January, I hope you had a good one. Mine was rubbish, gotta be honest, but uh, you know what, we're stepping into February now, and uh, that means it's time for January favourites. So I'm going to go through some liqueurs I've been really enjoying, and stay tuned if you're into that. First recommendation this month, or at least something that I've definitely been enjoying, is something really simple and something quite inexpensive as well, and that is New Amsterdam Gin. Looks like this. The bottle kind of looks like something out of Mad Men, to be honest. Other than just being a nice everyday gin that you can use for martinis, not that you should probably be drinking martinis every day, is that it's nice and smooth. It's not overly floral or botanical, but it's not overly dry either. It's just kind of very much in the middle. It almost reminds me of a Plymouth gin. But uh, yeah, it's something I've been reaching for a lot, and I find that it makes a really nice space, especially for extra dry martinis. So it's a great choice, especially if you're on a college budget. Now for something quite special, this is Domad de Canton, I think that's how you pronounce it anyway. It's a cognac based ginger liqueur. What I really like about this stuff is, it's quite sweet, so it definitely is something that you can add to a cocktail in lieu of, or instead of, like a simple syrup or something like that. But it does also have a little bit of a warmth that it adds to any drink because it is a ginger based liqueur. And I find that this stuff can add so much elegance to a drink so simply, and you just have to use the smallest bit to get enough flavor out of it, so please don't have a heavy hand. First of all, this stuff isn't too cheap. I think it's around $35 to $40 for this size bottle, which I'm pretty sure is a 750 ml. It goes great with things like vanilla vodka, and not anything that's sweet already, but things that have inherently sweet notes in them and that picks up on that and adds a bit of warmth so that's incredible. I actually made a very simple cocktail that had uh, vanilla vodka, I think it was absolute vanille, and vanilla pear seltzer made by Polar. I'm going to do a video on them soon because they're a great seltzer company. And this, and that was it, but it was so nice. Also, look at how beautiful the top and just the overall packaging of this bottle is. It looks like something that belongs on a vanity table. So I think when this is done, I'll definitely be repurposing this bottle. So you can't beat that, I don't think. Next on the list of interesting liqueurs is something that is quite big in Italy, and that is Aperol. Aperol, I want to call it Campari's sweeter, softer cousin. And it's an herbal liqueur. It's based on an infusion of selected roots and herbs, and it's, like I said, a product of Italy. And the first time I ever tried this stuff, I remember being younger and thinking, oh my god, it tastes like, comp um, not Campari, excuse me, potpourri. And I thought it was the weirdest thing, I kind of swore off it, and for years I didn't touch the stuff because I was so thrown off of it the first time I tried it. And then, I think it was earlier this year, or earlier last year, when I tried it out again in a bar because I was getting more into mixology by that point, and I was like, oh my god, this stuff, has incredible, incredible depth to it, but it also adds such an interesting flavor to drinks in a way that I hadn't really appreciated before. I use this a lot when I don't feel like using something like an aromatic bitters in a drink, where you want something that's going to add a bit of bitterness, but that you don't want something spicy necessarily, and I find that this is where this kind of comes in. It's great for summer drinks. I really do like it with fruits and things of that nature, but just as much I've been mixing it with rye whiskey and I also think that's wonderful. So this is something that I would definitely suggest as a sort of puzzle piece of sorts. If you're past the point of the basics and you want to start trying something new, this is something that's great fun to play around with and it'll definitely have you on your toes thinking of new recipes. I really don't know how I've been able to have a channel on YouTube about mixology without mentioning this stuff for as long as I have, but this is Saint-Germain. It is a product of France as well and uh, it has a bunch of other text on here, but I don't think it's really worth mentioning. It's an elderflower and passion fruit liqueur. I tend to call this stuff the mixologist ketchup because I feel like it gets thrown into so many drinks, some where it really adds something and sometimes it's just thrown in as an afterthought because it sounds nice on the menu, but this stuff is beautiful. It's not something that should be overlooked just because of how popular it's become. I really like to use Saint-Germain in gin-based drinks because it is quite floral, but I definitely feel like the resounding notes in this are more on the passion fruit side than they are the elderflower, even though it's sometimes pegged as an elderflower liqueur only. This stuff is great. It blends great with gin and citrus flavors. I also have used it to great success with vodka, and I think I've even played around with it. And um, I used this with Jack Daniels, actually, and that paired really beautifully, too, because it was a little bit sweeter, so it worked really nicely. Just like the Domaine de Canton 
look at this bottle. It's insane. It's something that you want to display, and I think that's really smart as a marketing move. It's gorgeous. It looks like some kind of perfume bottle at the time. And just like the Domaine de Carton, it has this beautiful, beautiful top. And while we're here and focused, uh, I tried out a nail tutorial today by somebody on YouTube actually and her name is Oh My Garters on here and I thought it was quite fun and Valentine's Day inspired so thanks for the tip Rebecca and finally I'm ending on a pretty simple note this time actually and it's something I just mentioned and that is Jim Beam Rye. I know I mentioned this in my World of Whiskey video which I'll link in the down bar if you didn't get to see it but um, before this I hadn't bought a bottle of rye for my home bar. I've had it out a couple of times, I liked it, and I didn't really know where to begin. And having kind of no time at the liquor store, I thought, you know what, I tried Jim Beam when it was first trying bourbon, so I might as well try Jim Beam Rye. And it's really quite nice. I'm still enjoying it. As you can see, I've been using it in a lot of cocktails, so that's always a good sign that it's being well loved. I actually made a cocktail, I guess it's not an old fashioned anymore, where I replaced the bitters of a regular old fashioned with the Aperol, and that actually turned out really nicely. I don't know what I'm going to try next time. If you have any good suggestions for a rise that you like, I would love to hear it in the comments. That's it for things that I've bought for my bar that I really enjoy, but when I've been out, I've really still been liking dark beers. I think it's just the season. So I had a black Magic Hat IPA last week or when the Super Bowl aired, and that was beautiful. That was definitely worth trying. I don't know if it's even bottled or what the deal with it is, but I had it on tap at a bar. And then I also had something else quite interesting. Oh, I had a cocktail when I was out that had muddled Thai chili peppers and lemongrass and ginger and lemon juice. It wasn't the most balanced drink, I have to admit, but it was interesting. It was really spicy for something that you would order out. And while it was interesting and while it is worth noting, it was way too acidic and there was absolutely no kind of consideration for the, the necessity, in some ways, to balance out the drink a bit, so that was kind of disappointing. They served it with a vanilla milk back shot, which I thought was repulsive, so I wouldn't touch that. But it's something to kind of play around with. I'm going to start playing around more with spice, I think, in my drinks at home, but hopefully doing a little bit more of a balanced, even job with it. But that's it for this month, so let me know what you guys have been drinking, and if you want to see anything on my channel, please let me know, and I'll talk to you soon.